Greetings, everyone. Welcome to our Bible study and welcome to a brand new series um, here, Word and Song, mm -hmm. and this, this idea that we have a, a live stream Bible study every Tuesday, half an hour, exploring different topics in the Word of God. We just finished our series, Every Knee Will Bow, and if you didn't get a chance to check that out, um, I encourage you to go to the YouTube channel, and we try to keep them in folders there in playlists. Mm -hmm. So what a blessing that was. Check that out and, and go through that. And we were blessed mm -hmm. um, going through that series. Mm -hmm. We told you last week that we hadn't yet decided what our top topic was, and that was the truth. We we had a few ideas, but it just hadn't gelled yet. Mm -hmm. And um, we want to announce to you our exciting new series. What, what What's the title we've got? Yeah, so we have um, the title Shadows of Jesus. So our new series is actually going to be exploring a little bit of some Old Testament characters, and seeing how they were just a brief outline, a little representation of what was to come in Jesus. And so, I mean, we, we, we've, even this morning, we were just going through the biblical, but the Bible character we're going to have a look at today, and we were just amazed at the precision and just the connections between these, these Bible characters that are amazing in and of themselves, but when you compare them to Jesus and, and put them side by side, it is quite incredible what you find. It leaves you standing in awe of this book yeah. even more. Yeah. And so we've done some uh, a, a variety of different topics. And what we're going to be looking at is uh, a story-based series mm -hmm. and particularly um, more biographical, looking at people and how certain lives, it's a five-part series, we're only going to take on five right now, but you could do more. You could so, do them all. You could do in, them all. In all honesty, yeah. And we're going to see Jesus in the Old Testament. Mm. But Jesus is not to be found exclusively in the beautifully also in the Old Testament. And we've, we've entitled shadows of Jesus. Mm. Now it's fascinating. We've all, we all know what shadows are. We can see one actually back here. Yep. <laughs> and that's Levi's oh, shadow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so you know what a shadow is? It's when, when light passes by and then leaves a, an outline of you mm. It's not as great a detail of you. So that's why when you're standing there and you can, you know, um, see an outline of yourself, mm -hmm. a shadow, mm -hmm. or an outline of a house or whatever, it gives you, you know it's a house and you know it's a reflection of you, but it's, it's far less than you. Mm -hmm. And what we find in Scripture is that people, circumstances, um, events, the sanctuary symbols, all these different things are like outlines mm -hmm. or shadows of the Messiah to come. Yeah. When Jesus comes, he's everything and more than the outline and the shadow portrays. And so we want to jump in today. Thank you for joining us. We hope that you're having a good day. And if you're not, that by God's grace, it'll get better. Mm -hmm. uh, I know that when I go to the word of God and to prayer, that's how my soul is uplifted and strengthened. We welcome you uh, here to, to this space. And uh, we, we pray that you're blessed. Let's bow our heads and pray together. Father in heaven, you are so, so incredibly good to us. And I thank you for the opportunity to open the word of God with my brother Levi and with everybody else who is tuning in. Thank you so much for being our friend. We ask for the Holy Spirit to bless this presentation, that every person who listens would sense that they have been fed from you and that you have blessed them. This we ask in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. I hope it becomes a tradition that every Tuesday night you not only listen, but you listen with your Bibles in hands because we're just going to keep going to the, the Word of God tonight and, and flip through a few verses. We want to go first to John 5, 39 and just reinforce, illustrate this very point that we've already made. John 5, 39 is where we're going to go. And, and just so you know, we, um, we usually have someone on the back end of this software able to look through the comments and, and, and get them up on the screen. At the moment, we don't have someone it's at the moment. It's a two-man team right <laughs> It's a two-man <laughs> team today. And so um, we can see your comments coming up here. Nalene, um, Doe, Louise, Miller. Good to see you all here. Well, yeah. yeah, really, really grateful for uh, your comments, for your prayers, and for the interaction. And we'll do our best to have someone on the back end as quick as possible. Yes. Because it's so nice to be able to interact with you uh, as, it, as it comes up on the screen. Totally. Yes, so John 5.39 is where we find ourselves. John 5.39 says this, and my Bible's in red, meaning Jesus is speaking here. And he says, you search the scriptures. Here he's talking to uh, the religious leaders of the time of Jesus. And he says, you search the scriptures, referring to the Old Testament, because 
The New Testament was non-existent at this point. It hadn't been written. It hadn't been written. So he's talking specifically about the Old Testament. He says, you search the scriptures, for in them you think you have eternal life. And these are they which testify of me. And just consider the profundity of what Jesus is saying. Um, I don't know if you've read Leviticus recently, or if you've read Ezekiel recently, or just any, 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 any book in the Old Testament. Sometimes it can be challenging to kind of get what Jesus is saying here. But what he's saying is in, in every verse, in every chapter, in every story, in every law, in every single thing that is communicated in the Old Testament, it's actually testifying of me. I was coming, and I am here to fulfill the Old Testament. He's basically saying, you'll find me everywhere. That's, that's really what it is. You'll find me everywhere, mm -hmm. and you're meant to find me everywhere. And as yes. he points out, he says, but you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. Um, Jesus and what the scriptures portrayed about becoming Messiah, they wanted a different Messiah. Yeah. yeah. Um, but but what, a, what a thought. Yeah. In scripture, he says, you search the scriptures. You're going to find me there. That's, mm -hmm. that's, where, you, that's where you should find me. And it's amazing that this is the interpretation key to the Old Testament. You point. want to interpret the Old Testament correct? Look for Jesus in every verse. Every story. Every story, every chapter, whatever. Jesus is there to be found. So I'd like to take you now to Luke chapter 24 and verse 27. We're just going to hit four verses in total before we hit our character of the day, which is Joseph, mm -hmm. one of our favorite, favorite um, stories and personalities in scripture. Jesus says to his disciples, O foolish ones, this is verse 25, sorry. O foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe in all that the prophets have spoken. It's Luke 24, verse 26 now. Christ is to enter into his glory. And Moses, in all the prophets, he expounded to them all the scriptures, things concerning himself. He did a Bible study with them that day, and he started, the Bible says, in Moses. Moses wrote the first five books of the Bible, mm -hmm. started at the beginning of the Bible, and then went through all the additional prophets as well. And it says that he expounded or explained or unpacked or unraveled in all the scriptures, mm -hmm. the things mm -hmm. concerning himself. Yeah. What a Bible study. Jesus saw himself in shadow form outlined mm -hmm. in the Old Testament. He was the substance. He's the reality. He's the genuine article, the actual savior, but he is predicted, he's revealed, he's reflected in the lives of biblical characters in the past through symbols and ceremonies and laws and all these different things. He is outlined there. That's mm. all shadows of Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, it's just wonderful that in every part of Scripture, Jesus can be found and he was meant to be found. That was planned. That's right. It was planned that we would find Jesus in every part of Scripture. I would, have, I would have loved to be part of that Bible study. And I hope that through the Spirit being with us today and through this Bible study, we can experience something like what those disciples experienced because they said that their hearts burned within them as mm -hmm. he spoke with them. And so as we look at the story of Joseph, let's find Jesus there because the result of finding Jesus in the Old Testament is our hearts are going to burn within us because that's the way we're meant to read the Old Testament. You get us super excited mm -hmm. about Scripture. Mm -hmm. So... What's that? We've got a question here, yeah. and the question is, because because for, for some of you tuning in, you might be quite new to the Bible, mm -hmm. and so this will be quite a new thought that Old Testament characters will look like Jesus, and you'll see their yeah. life like uncannily similar to Christ's life. But some of you are very familiar with this, and I want to just address those of you who are familiar with the fact that there are stories and people in the Old Testament that have an uncanny resemblance to Jesus. And um, this is the question. Why? Do we see Jesus in so many of the lives of the people in the Old Testament? <laughs> Why is that? Did God kind of craft their life in a certain way so that we could look back and say, wow, how similar they were? Mm -hmm. Was, is, is that how there's a similarity? As we have thought and prayed about it and considered what the scriptures have to say about it, we've come to two conclusions about mm -hmm. why the Old Testament stories have an uncanny resemblance to Jesus. Mm. Mm. Which of these points would you like? Um, yeah, I can go to the first one, John yeah, 8. John 8, 44 is actually where we find this first principle here. John 8, 44, Jesus is talking here, and he's talking in quite what seems like harsh language here. He says, 
You are of your father the devil, and the desires of your father you want to do. He was a murderer from the beginning, and does not stand in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaks a lie, he speaks from his own resources, for he is a liar and the father of it. And here it's very interesting that Jesus is actually saying that they are of their father because of the attitudes and the characteristics they're actually displaying in their lives that they've chosen to d display and they've chosen to resemble. And he, Jesus is really saying, you remind me mm -hmm. of someone. You remind me of your father, the devil. In the way that you are expressing your life and your how your character is coming out is actually showing me that you're like someone. Your story is actually being merged Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, in this situation, with the story of the devil, it's reminding Jesus of someone else. I'll tell you what, though. The vice versa is also true. Jesus' life can also be seen in ours. When we start to choose God's principles and his characteristics, our lives then start to show and reveal Jesus' life. So did did God dictate and, and orchestrate all of this Old Testament stories to to look just like Jesus, like manipulate, when he, them, <laughs> manipulate them around so it looked like Jesus. Well, actually, I think that the characteristics that they chose to display to become more like Christ actually made their stories merge with Jesus's. That's right. Yeah, I love that because yeah, Jesus is not saying about these religious leaders, the devil's your dad. No, this is he's using a metaphor here, and he's saying yeah, and I love that point. Like you. The way that you're functioning towards me, talking behind my back and trying to do all these different dark and weird and creepy things, you're reminding someone. The story is sounding very similar. Yeah, I'm seeing a familiar... It's like a shadow. Mm -hmm. It's like an outline. It's like a miniature version of Satan and what he did and what he does. And, and, and in the character that we're going to see today, Joseph, we actually see certain principles that he decides to live his life by. And we start to see someone's story coming through that because of the way that he starts to live his life. We yeah. start to see Jesus' life in Joseph's story. And so we, we'll, we'll touch on this at the end of our presentation, but your life and mine can tell the story of Jesus. Mm. As, as we embrace Christ and embrace everything that he is, and we were to look back and see our whole life, we will see little little chapters where we go wow that's very similar to the way that jesus what he went through and yeah. what his experiences were yeah and so these is... types of jesus's are not reserved to just the old testament they can happen in our life right now that's right we've got one other point to why is jesus so similar to uh, or why are so many people in the old testament <laughs> so similar to christ and that's yeah. in the book of hebrews uh, hebrews chapter 2 and verse 17 mm. The Bible says, therefore, in all things, he, that is Jesus, had to be made like his brethren, that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in things pertaining to God, to make propitiation for the sins of the people. Beautiful point here. In all things, he had to be made like his brethren. Mm -hmm. And I love this. There's elements of Christ's life that he went through simply because he was good. Mm. i.e. you speak truth and people don't like that and they get angry with you yeah. um, you be generous um, uh, greedy people are going to be upset with you You know, mm -hmm. there's a certain cause and effect it's like a law, like a, a response mm -hmm. that evil will always respond to good in a certain way yeah. it's a predictable way mm -hmm. but why did Jesus go to the wilderness for 40 days? that doesn't seem like an effect of something no, it seems to have a choice yeah. it's, like a, it's like a, why did he go to Egypt? And seem to like retrace the history of Israel. Mm. Why did Jesus climb up a mountain? And like, it's like he's re walking the, the story. He's actually going through all the things that his people have been through mm -hmm. and facing the challenges that they have been through and walking through the, the, the dark valleys that they've walked through mm. for them mm. and fighting their battles for them. So, why do we see the Old Testament stories and Jesus just so beautifully mirrored? Number one, because when we embrace the spirit of the kingdom of God and live out the kingdom principles, our lives will become more like Christ's life. And mm -hmm. you'll see that beautiful mm -hmm. thing in our lives. But he himself in coming to this world wanted that his life would be like your life. Yeah. Yeah. And that he would walk 
through the challenges and all the different things that you've been through. And so we see this beautiful mirror and we see Christ in the Old and the New Testament and in our lives yeah. as well. And great. Jesus is not removed from our sufferings or our hardships. He actually came to take part in them and to actually succeed where we failed. Amen. So his plan of salvation is to make his story a little bit more like our story. And, and through that, through that experience and seeing Jesus become a little bit more like us, we are then inspired by his story and our story merges with his. Amen. Amen. And this is how we get these types of Jesus. Yeah. Okay. So we're, we're <laughs> going to start with the story of Joseph. And you may be thinking, wow, we've gone 16 minutes. How in the world can you do Joseph in 14 minutes? We can't. We can't. <laughs> and this is the thing, 26% of the book of Genesis is devoted to his life. Mm. And to put that into perspective, Genesis actually covers more years than the rest of Scripture does all the way to, say, like Paul or John. It actually covers more history, more years, and 26% of that history is dedicated to one guy, primarily Joseph. So if you haven't read the story, go and read it. But we just want to just go through and make some points and make some observations and some connections, and you're going to see that... Joseph's life is a type or a symbol or a miniature version, a shadow, an outline in uncanny similarity here of the Messiah, Jesus Christ, who is to come. It's absolutely beautiful. Can we just hold up these notes for a second? Because I'm sure we're not going to get through all of these points, but that's a brief little, I mean, that's just the top of our head, trying to study and think of as many as we can. The links between Joseph's story and and Jesus's story, and I, I am sure of it that there are far more than this. Yes. Yep. But I just wanted to show you that 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 it is uncanny how similar these it's stories amazing. are when you start digging into it. Let's take it point for point. Mm. Um, yes, this points on that. Start at the top. Was a beloved sent by his father to find his brothers in a faraway land. Interesting. Mm. Mm. The second point we have here is his life and mission were prophesied in visions and dreams. When Joseph was really young, he had visions and dreams that he himself, I'm sure, didn't even understand completely. Um, but it was actually a foretelling of what he was going to achieve, what God was going to do through him. We know that Jesus was confirmed by the word of prophecy and by visions and dreams. And everything that Jesus did was according to Scripture. And so we see this link again between Joseph and Jesus. And just back on that first point, mm. um, the beloved son who was sent by his father because mm. his brothers were in a very far away, and actually it was just the father actually didn't know where they were. They were very far away. Jesus came from heaven. He left the father's side in heaven. He came to this world to seek and to save mm. that which was lost. Mm -hmm. And he came with nothing but love in his heart. Joseph came to his brothers carrying bread, provisions, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to give to his brothers, and they were ungrateful. Jesus, the Bible says, it says, he came to his own, in his own, did not receive mm -hmm. him. Mm -hmm. the, the brothers, when they see Joseph walking towards him, towards them, oh, they get so angry, they take the bread and they throw him mm -hmm. in, in a pit, mm -hmm. and they sell him as a slave. And, and, and a theme we're actually going to see with these shadows of Jesus, and the whole shadow illustration helps us to understand this, is every time we compare it to Jesus, you also have to add that even more so did Jesus. Even more so. Yeah, yeah. We see that through the book of Hebrews. Actually, Paul has a look at a whole heap of different shadows or types of Jesus through the sanctuary. And he goes, how much more? Yeah, how yeah. much more? How much more? And that's the theme of Jesus. How much more? Mm. The Bible says concerning uh, Jacob, when he found out the dream that his son Joseph had mm. about the sun, moon, and the stars, bowing down to him, mm. the Bible says that Jacob kept all these things mm. in his heart. The brothers rejected that, but he kept it and pondered these things in his heart. And it just reminds me that when um, the wise men came and uh, various other prophecies were made regarding Jesus, Mary, the Bible says, pondered all these things in mm. her heart. And she believed, even though all, the, all of J Jesus' brothers didn't believe, mm. she believed and just was just waiting and just seeing what God would do. Mm. There's an interesting mm. little link here. And, and and it's fascinating to see why and how Je uh, Joseph was hated in his young life. I mean, he was hated because of his purity and commitment to God's word. He treasured God's principles. Um, and also he was hated because of his special relationship with his father. 
His brothers were jealous of that relationship that, that Joseph had with his father. I want to turn quickly, just very quickly, to John 5, verse 18. John 5, 18 shows that Jesus was hated for a very, very similar reason. John 5, verse 18. Bear with me as I find it. John 5, 18 says, Therefore the Jews sought all the more to kill him. And we know that Joseph's, Joseph's brothers were not pure in their intent. They were trying to kill yeah, Joseph. Yeah, yeah. Um, sought all the more to kill him because he own, he not only broke the Sabbath, but also said that God was his father, making himself equal with God. You see, they did not like Jesus' position with God, and that's why they hated him. And it's easy to think and to simplify this down and say, oh, there was this favoritism. And yes, I don't think it was wise for Jacob to show that kind of favoritism or to give his brother, you know, to, 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 to love his, his son Joseph more. However, when we look at the broader story, these brothers are wild boys. Mm. Two of them murdered a whole city of people. Mm -hmm. The eldest son um, slept with his mother-in-law and basically did a power move over his father and just complicated everything. These guys were um, sleeping around. These were very, very immoral men. Mm -hmm. And they liked being far away from yeah, their father. They didn't want to be close to they home. They didn't want to be close. Mm -hmm. Joseph was someone who loved the God of Jacob. Mm -hmm. And he l wanted to learn about the principles of the kingdom mm -hmm. of heaven. Mm -hmm. We know this because later on when he was tempted by Potiphar's wife, he said, how can I sin against God? Mm -hmm. How would he know that that is a sin against God unless he learned it? Mm -hmm. So he was someone who learned to love the principles of the kingdom of God and he was hated because of mm. it. Mm. The next point here is that he was actually the only one in the family who could truly lead the family. The other brothers were were immoral men. Joseph was someone who was actually the only father's mm -hmm. estate. Um, Which we find in Jesus the only one that can right rule heaven. That's right. I mean, put anyone else on the throne, it's a bit of a dangerous kind of proposition. You're like, oh, hey, like what, what's going to go? He's but the only one fit to... to, to safe and secure it. when Jesus is on the throne. Amen. Completely. Um, envied and hated by his brothers so much that they decided to kill him. I mean, mm. this is a huge point. Yeah. Jesus came to his own and they rejected him. His very brothers, Joseph's very brothers, decided that they hated him enough that they wanted to get rid of him. They didn't like his presence. And the same with Jesus here on this earth. Mm. Even when he came to bring them bread. Mm. Um, there's a point here. It says, his robe was different and more beautiful. A robe in the Bible symbolizes character. Mm. And as Joseph had a robe that was beautiful and kingly and noble, Jesus had a character that was beautiful and kingly and noble. Mm. And he was hated and envied because of it. Mm. There was uh, something that, Je that Jesus was sold for that also Joseph was sold for. Mm -hmm. A certain amount of silver was given for both of these, these individuals. Jo uh, Joseph was sold for 20, was it? And Jesus. Jesus was sold for 30. And so we both see them being sold away. Um, one by Judas, one by his brothers. Both filled with greed. Yeah, and, and both the people that sold him were close. Interesting. Judas was close to Jesus, one of his 12 disciples. And then the brothers were close to Joseph and sold him for, for silver as well. Um, they then came up with a lie, of course, that Joseph was, when they threw him in the, mm -hmm. in the, in the pit, they came up with a lie. Sorry, when they sold him as a slave. Um, when he's the computer. Sorry, we're back now. We're back now. <laughs> Whoa, that's a bit scary. The screen went blank. Um, J Jacob had to find out this news with mm -hmm. this this robe of many colors torn apart with blood that they'd kind of mocked here. This in this moment, the father's heart was broken mm -hmm. as he saw that his son was torn apart by a wild beast, yeah. Yeah. and he he couldn't have hurt any more. Like he thought that Joseph was actually torn apart by this wild beast, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. And we we see such an incredible link here that the father in heaven. Was his heart was broken as Jesus was actually mm. torn apart, not just physically, but spiritually, as the the um the sin of the world was placed upon his shoulders. He was broken and he was bruised and he was crushed. 
Mm. And we see as Jacob just cries and just wants, he says, I'm going to die through this mm -hmm. pain. Mm -hmm. We see a little mirrored image, a little shadow mm. of the father's pain as he sees his son suffering. Totally, through. totally. And if you ever wondered, is, was, was God in heaven licking his lips and, you know, rubbing his hands going, yes, justice is served? No, not at all. His heart was completely broken as he sees his only son being torn apart by his brothers, being torn apart by the people that he came to save, the very people that he came looking for. Um, There's a few here we're just going to have to yeah. skip through for the sake of time. <laughs> um, immediately after that, he was sold um, as a uh, sold by that twenty uh, bits of silver, and then he becomes a servant. So in the same way Jesus was sent from heaven, not to become a king on earth, although many of the Jews thought that that was the case, he actually came to be a servant and he showed the greatness through a servant. And in Joseph's life, we see the greatness of a servant. Mm -hmm. I want to turn quickly to Philippians 2 verse 7 and just shows this point very quickly. Philippians 2 verse 7. It says this. One page back. Philippians 2 verse 7. It says... But he made himself, that being Jesus, of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant and coming in the likeness of men. Mm -hmm. Jesus was not ashamed to be a servant. In fact, he actually showed his greatness through it. We see J Joseph's greatness when he was a servant. If we didn't have that part of Joseph's story, maybe we could think that he's just this spoiled brat that just goes around and gets all the treasures of the world, right? Mm -hmm. But we see the greatness of Joseph as a servant. We see the greatness of Jesus as a servant as well. Living out the principles of Jesus. Living out the principles mm. of the kingdom. We're just going to work through a few of these pretty quickly here, and then we're going to try to make a few points to wrap up, because I know that our time is disappearing quickly. He was repeatedly, this is when he was working in Potiphar's house, he was repeatedly resisted. The Bible says Jesus was in all pointed like as we are yet without sin. Um, this resistance aroused the hatred and persecution of the tempter. Do you see a similarity there? He was falsely accused. His refusal to yield to sin cost him all that he had. He learned obedience through suffering and he was faithful in trial. He showed grace to everyone, including his enemies. He cared for the good and the bad in the prison. He was faithful even in prison. He became the, the leader of the looking after While the prisoners. While a prisoner, he became the person that looked after the prisoners. And then the day came where he went from the prison to the throne in one day. Mm -hmm. Jesus, on resurrection morning, came from the heart of the earth, as it were, and he resurrected. And the Bible says that he went to heaven to get the approval of his father. He said to, to Mary, I haven't yet ascended to heaven. Mm -hmm. Um and then, uh, continuing on here, he became the ruler of the world. Mm. Judgment was entrusted to him. He became the architect of, the plan, of a plan to save the whole world, not just the children of Israel, but the whole world was going to be saved from this famine through his, his work. When his brothers came down to, see, to, to get some grain from Egypt, he was unrecognized mm. by his brothers. He was a discerner of their hearts. He showed grace and love to his brothers, the very ones who had treated him so badly. Remember Jesus on the cross said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And afterward, he said to, to his disciples, go and preach to the children of Israel. Keep, mm -hmm. keep calling them. Even though they crucified me, I still want them. I mm -hmm. still want them. Um, he didn't want their money. He put them back in the bags. The Bible says that salvation is a free gift. Without money and without price, we can have it. God is not wanting your money. He's wanting you. Mm -hmm. He's wanting your heart. Israel, or Jacob, his father, struggled to submit to the help. Back there, and he was trying to do it all on his own, and we find in the future that Israel didn't really was quite resistant to the help that Jesus came to give. Um, and the only way for Jacob to save his family was to give up Benjamin, the son of his right hand. And it was a true sacrifice. He said, if I lose my son. So again, he has to yield up his son. Mm -hmm. Another little type of Christ as well. Hearts are transformed by grace and reconciliation occurs and the spirit of self-sacrifice is revealed in the life mm -hmm. of his brothers. He invites his family to live with him in a land of plenty. Mm -hmm. 
Jacob finds out that his son is alive. And it's as it were, he was resurrected in that moment. He mm. thought his son was dead, but his son is actually alive and he experiences this resurrection moment where his son is standing before him, the very person that he thought was dead. Everyone lives happily under Joseph's care. Mm. And a summary statement would be this. The record of his life was spotless, overflowing with grace and forgiveness. Mm. And as I look through the comments, I can see that there's a few people, Tony, Louise, I can see that your hearts are burning within you as you're rediscovering a story we knew from childhood, maybe. A rediscovering a very common story that we know because Jesus can be seen within. The final point, our story becomes more like his story when we start living out his principles. Jesus made his story a little bit more like ours because that was the plan of redemption. And you can be a shadow of Jesus as well. May I pray with you? Father in heaven, Lord, thank you for the story of Joseph. What a delight it is to see Joseph, but also at the same time see Jesus, to be reminded of the Savior who was to come and who has come and who has succeeded, Lord, where we have failed. Thank you. Keep us for the next the next week and bring us back to Tuesday where we get to discover another character where we will see Jesus within. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thanks for joining us. God bless you all.